live from the heart of beautiful Almani, as we call the Beverly Hills of San Gabriel Valley. This is Almani tonight. I know you're expecting to see little Jamie Neary here, the voice of Almani, but unfortunately she's out sick. So you're stuck with me, folks. Sorry about that. But it's going to be a great show, and we're looking forward to entertaining you guys for the next hour and give you all kinds of good information that will really, really lighten up your day. We've got some good, talented people here. So without any further ado, we're going to turn it to the man with a plan, our good buddy, an all-around member of our family, Mr. Robert Colvin. Take it away, Robert. <laughs> Robert always comes up with a plan. Okay, next to me is the very brilliant and talented young man, our city manager, as it were, Mr. Jesus Gomez. That round of applause for him, please. Yeah. Thank How you. Doing, Jesus? We finally very got, good. We finally got him on. So you know, it's been we've been trying, you know, to get this guy on there. It's like trying to get the president. Okay, we can never get him on here because he's so busy uh, working with our budget and you know, basically running the city. And that's what it's about here. So we're just very pleased as punch to have him on here. So what's the latest, Jesus? What's happening out there in uh, City Hall East? Well, uh, one of the things that uh, we're focused on um, currently is uh, preparing for the budget uh, for next year. We have been um, in consultation with the different departments uh, so that uh, we can uh, have a balanced budget. Uh, just uh, recently, we had a um, an audit presentation to the City Council where we got a clean opinion, um, unqualified opinion, so we're very happy about that uh, for the city. And so um, we have, uh, again, uh, been have been spending time uh, preparing the budget. You know, said, and I know that's a full-time operation for you to get it all going, and I mean, you only have a few months, right, before it all comes down to Right, we're, we're due to present to the city council in June, uh, but before that we'll have some um, uh, study sessions with the city council mm -hmm. to uh, give them a uh, proposed budget and then we'll refine it and be able to uh, hopefully in uh, June be able to provide a uh, an adopted budget for for the community to to uh, be able to implement well that sounds good what is it I mean I heard a lot of talk about uh, measure GG or something like that is that relevant relative uh, relevant to the actual budget or is that gonna be something else that's going on or no um, measure GG is a um, half cent sales tax that the uh, community uh, supported um, in 2008 uh, and it has provided uh, financial uh, sales tax revenue for the city. And we have, um, we have a challenge next year because it sunsets in April. Mm. And so um, we're, uh, we'll be addressing that with the city council in the near future. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a knockdown, drag out fight. No, it'll be a, a great discussion. It'll uh, it's so it, diplomatic. It's a great discussion. It, you know? It'll be a great discussion for uh, the staff and the city council to be able to balance the budget. Well, I know you guys are going to pull it together because you always do. And in just the short time I've been involved with the city, uh, it, uh, it amazes me. Because I've sat into other city council meetings in other cities. And let me tell you, you guys do a heck of a job. You move it quick. And that's something really outstanding. And this young man, let me tell you, you ever get a chance? People out there, if you ever come to City Hall, if you see Jesus, go up to him, shake his hand, thank him for everything he does, say hi. Because, you know, a lot of times people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes here. 
And uh, these are the people, like like Asus and a few others, that make this like that make it run. And that's the whole deal. You know, we wouldn't even be here right now. Robert wouldn't be here. If Robert would be out there, he'd be back at you know the community center. You know, and Maggie, we got a little Maggie, Prime Minister from the Wellness Center. She wouldn't be here. You know, so you know, it's all about everybody doing their part to make the, keep the city going. And Asus is like one of the key players in this, and that's why I'm so pleased to have him on our show. And so, so what's going to happen, Asus? I mean. I know right now you're like, uh, what, the temporary city manager, or did you guys already get somebody else? Uh, I'm currently the acting city manager, okay. and um, the uh, city council is going through a process, a recruitment process for the uh, permanent city manager. Um, they've been in the process for a couple of months now, and mm -hmm. uh, that process will probably continue another month or so. Well, is your hat in the ring, or, I mean, you know, what? Uh, uh, seems like it ain't broke, why fix it, right? Well, I, I am one of the applicants. I applied for the uh, permanent city manager, uh, and I'm obviously one of many applicants that applied. And um, I'm uh, happy to be in the process. Good. Can we? Okay, send those cards and letters too. Let's get <laughs> Jesus in there as city manager. Well, you know, really, it's. I mean, it's. I'm sure it's a very daunting process that you have to go through in order to uh, uh, get people involved, get them, you know, on there. And you see, to me, it makes sense because you know them. You know the ins and outs. I mean, come on. We know that, and uh, I can't think of anybody who would be better qualified than you to handle that. You know? And I'm not just saying that; he's not paying me to say this. I just mean that because he's a good guy. I've seen him in action, and that's I why. appreciate that. No, Thank no you. No problem. No problem. And he makes good speeches too. We were trying to find the speech, and, and we'll be running it soon. Of when we had the groundbreaking ceremony on Veterans Day, for the the housing for the homeless vets, and I know uh, Jesus gave a real great speech there, and it really got people going. It got it, it got the, the momentum going. You know, and you did a great job. You know, and well, it was a great event. You know, it's a it's a, a unique, a very unique project uh, for homeless veterans. Um, it'll be the first one in the San Gabriel Valley that's uh, specialized housing for that that group. Um, and we're very fortunate to have a city council that's supportive of that type of uh, housing. And uh, one of the unique things about the location is that it's just walking distance from the VFW. So, right. so we're hoping that the the housing and the VFW Center become one um, uh, and, and can be kind of a uh, synergistic from, uh, from having the VFW already established there right. and then uh, the, the Homeless Veterans uh, uh, Project. And if you drive by uh, Ramona Boulevard, uh, you, can also, you can already see the two by fours above the, the fences. So it's, uh, it's coming up pretty fast. Oh, good. I know, I know we, had, uh, we have um, Mike Felix on the show here from time to time. Actually, he does a veteran show called Home uh, once a month. And uh, very supportive, very supportive of what we're doing in there. And he's a wonderful guy. So I'm, I'm glad he's involved. And this is going to really help out a lot. Uh, you know, we actually, we just had Saturday, we had our woman's talk show. We have our own version of The View. It just happens. It's called Heart and Soul. And one of the participants is Cecilia Moda, who's the daughter of Manny Moda. Dodger great. Well, we, we were talking, and she says she wants to start doing baseball clinics, have her dad do baseball clinics here in Almani. So I'm gonna, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned, folks, because we're going to try to get something for the kids this summer to go out there and, and work with some of the Dodgers, and this will be an awesome undertaking. I understand they used to have it here for a while. So, you know, we're really, uh, really excited that's going to be taking off soon. Well, that'd be great. We would uh, welcome that here in the city. Uh, we have... Uh uh, a lot of uh, uh, baseball players. Uh, we get a very good use of our baseball fields, um, and uh, we would gladly, you know, host them and, and be able to provide our kids with, you know, that specialty training. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. Let me tell you, because we have a sports show now. It's called what? Uh, Lose uh, Urban Views or something of a sports show. Anyway, it'll be coming up. Was that? City Luz, Sports View. And so we have a sports show, so we're going to have Manny Moda on the show as well. And we're going to get a few of the Laker greats, and then we're going to be bringing in uh, some of the kids from the high schools so they can be on the same show with some of these legendary greats. And I think that'll be just an awesome undertaking, see? That's a, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd see, and, and we'll blame it on Jesus. We'll say he's <laughs> the guy that helped us get the channel started, so, you know, we'll blame it on him. Okay, we're going to turn it on over to Robert Colvin, the man with the plan, and we'll be back to uh, get some final thoughts from Jesus here on El Monte tonight, coming to you on beautiful Time Warner Channel 3. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Tell you, man, I, Robert, you just like like a fine wine. Just get better with age, man. Every time he comes up with something, I mean, he's just outstanding. That's why. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of quick announcements. We have a uh, new public works and transportation yard grand opening ceremony, and that's Thursday, April twenty fifth, twenty thirteen, at ten thirty a.m. at three nine nine zero Arden Drive in beautiful El Monte, California. So you might want to go check it out there if you have a little free time. Go do it. We've got the American Cancer Society Relay for Relay for Life. Help us earn money. They're going to have an event at Shakey's on May 2nd, 2013. And that's on 11420 Valley Boulevard. The phone number there is 626-350-4411. And that is for the Amani team. And you guys get involved with that because we need your help on that. You know, it's, uh, I, I'm sure there's not a one person who goes out there that hasn't known somebody who's been stricken by such a horrible disease. So get involved. And this is what it's all about. You know, then you can meet Jesus in person. <laughs> so tell us, this is, what other projects you have you have going for the city? What's uh, what's the latest coming up now? Uh, well, one of the projects that is uh, in progress is the uh, Valley Santa Anita project, um, and that is an intersection improvement project. But it's also the future site of norms. Uh, the city council just approved uh, the uh, 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 draft agreements for norms to be uh, to be built at, mm. at that site. Uh, but in, in conjunction, it has uh, an intersection improvement um, project there. So uh, that's, that's one of the projects. Um, the other project that's upcoming, um, it's a um, railroad underpass project on Baldwin. So that is upcoming. Um, it will um, be a, a project that will uh, improve traffic flow. Um, it, it will uh, uh, decrease accidents. Um, through that uh, intersection, uh, railroad and, and uh, the railroad and the uh, uh, tracks in the uh, in Baldwin, and uh, that's uh, upcoming here very very soon, and uh, that street will be closed, and so it'll have an impact on our uh, commuters and our residents. And um, but it'll it's a worthwhile project uh, for us to have because it uh, it mitigates uh, accidents. Well, what's the turnaround on that? When you say it's going to be closed, it's going to be closed like you know. Two years? I mean, what are we talking about here? It's approximately two, a two-year project. Yeah, I figured as uh, much, yeah. Because we've had that. We, you know, I've been uh, subject to other road improvements, and it usually takes about two years when they close it off. But like you said, it's a worthwhile effort because it's going to uh, decrease any sort of activity as far as uh, hazardous activity for people the way they drive. That's correct. You know, right. that's good. See, this was involved in all these good things, you know. And you see him, and he looks so humble, so unassuming, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's, just, he's like the Robert Colvin of, you know, city managers. <laughs> very, very modest, very, well, well, you know what, we're going to bring up a young lady right now, and hopefully we'll get her on up here, and that is Miss Kelly Middleton. Come on, Kelly, come on up here. Share our place with us. Sit around Cross, it's only about our small but sincere audience. You can just clip that little microphone onto your lapel there, dear, and we want to hear what good things you want to tell us about. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. So you are with uh, San Gabriel Valley. Mosquito and Vector 
Control district? Correct. Is that right? Student vector control district. Okay, what's a vector? I'm sorry. Ignorance. Good question. That is the first question I always get. A vector is an insect or an animal that can transmit disease. Oh, my goodness. So the vectors that we deal primarily with are mosquitoes mm -hmm. um, because they are responsible for all kinds of disease locally and on a worldwide scale. Well, definitely. I know that, especially with the kind of change of weather we've been having lately. I know it's been sort of uh, muggy and, and hot and damp, and it's just it's crazy. Exactly. It's crazy this year. Right. I don't know. I know you guys have been, uh, been at it for a while. I first heard about you guys about a year ago, and I, I saw the video that we had back then. And I know we also came out in the newspaper. They had El Monte because they found it in somebody's backyard. And that made the time. Can you believe it? They made the times. We made national news. <laughs> you know, right. we got Jesus here doing yeah. these wonderful projects. And a mosquito made the front page of the times. <laughs> so go figure. <laughs> go figure. But I guess, you know, it's really important because like I guess a lot of people are not aware of what they can do to prevent having that kind of infestation. And I know that you, we got a map. I, I wish you guys could see it. But it shows the, the infected areas, the infested areas, I should mm -hmm. say, of here in the area. So let's see, who, which camera? That one? Okay, there you go. I don't know if you can see it right there, but you can tell it's really, it's really spreading. And uh, yeah, there you go. So, and that's an aerial view showing like all the places that have been hit. So it's really a, a serious thing. This is the Asian tiger mosquito. Now, okay, Asian tiger mosquito? Right, it's a new species. It was introduced into this area. It's not native here in Southern California. It um, is normally found in Asia, um, Southeast Asia. And we don't really know for sure how it got here. Um, but our big concern is we don't want it here. Uh, we don't want it to become established because it's a very aggressive biting mosquito. It comes out during the daytime and bites, which is really different from other mosquitoes that we normally have here. Um, but our bigger concern is that it's one of the best vectors out there of all kinds of uh, pretty aggressive diseases. And so we are trying to prevent it from establishing itself here permanently. Well, when you say diseases, like what are we talking about? I can see some of it. You have like yellow fever, West Nile virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, dengue virus, which is a tropical, uh, very debilitating and potentially fatal illness. There's another one called chikungunya, which is... Um, another one of those nasty diseases and these are pretty significant issues in other parts of the world and um, if we if this mosquito gets established here all it would take would be an infected traveler to come into Los Angeles or um, a visitor into El Monte for example if the mosquito was here locally then they could just pick it up from that infected person and continue to spread it around so that's our big fear with this mosquito well it seems like like I said it seems like a very uh, you know horrendous situation because I'm looking at all these all these diseases and you know I'm, we're used to like you know the local right. garden variety mm -hmm. brand of mosquitoes around here and this thing looks really uh looks pretty deadly <laughs> looking at it because it's all it's got these spots and stripes so it's really well, yeah it's an amazingly pretty mosquito if you're into mosquitoes <laughs> uh, but it's very very tiny it's oh. about a quarter inch uh, okay. which most people when they think of what a mosquito looks like. We get a lot of calls this time of year about these big ones that fly around in the springtime. Oh yeah, you see them out there like sort of right. swamp mosquitoes. Yeah, and those are actually called crane flies and they're not mosquitoes at all, which is great news. They don't bite, they don't transmit any disease. And most of the mosquitoes that we have naturally here are about a quarter inch or so maximum size. And this one is about half of that size. Any, even down to as small as an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch is a very tiny, tiny mosquito. Um, black with white stripes on it and what's very distinctive can we what we already mentioned is that it'll come out and bite you during the daytime well well that's so thrilling yes i tell you come on in, Suze. i know you got something no and i was going to say that uh they've been very uh, aggressive in um, attending to the city of Ilmani, which we're very grateful because uh, obviously we want to help and 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 uh, eradicate the the mosquito and so uh, we're very, very fortunate that uh, they're, they're paying attention to, to El Monte. Well, I know they're doing some real wonderful stuff, and, you know, I really appreciate all they're doing. Give them a little round of applause for the people that are in here. Please. <laughs> they're step, they're stepping up, you know. And that's really important because, like I said, something like this, especially with uh, so many young people that are going to be out during the summer and all that, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be prime targets for something like this. So, right. look, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that uh, we do have information um, on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're trying to disseminate the information um, as quickly and as uh, easily accessible to the uh, residents so that uh, they're informed as to how to uh, help prevent from the mosquito establishing uh, here in, the, in El Monte. And I'm 
I'm sure um, you'll cover a little bit more sure. about how how to do that. Yeah. yeah. How do what do people have to do? What I to know look for. standing water. Well, yes, mosquitoes um, develop in standing water. So the female mosquito, after she bites and feeds on an animal or a person, will lay eggs in standing water or with this particular mosquito around the edges of um, things that hold water, like saucers under potted plants. Right. They'll lay their ed eggs on the edges of those saucers. And then when you water your plant and water fills up in that saucer, the eggs will hatch. And so the immature mosquitoes live in the mm -hmm. water and they look like little worms in the water. So a lot of people don't realize that those are baby mosquitoes. And they'll spend about five days or so living in the water before they'll emerge from the water as flying adults and biting adults. And so what we need people to really look for is any small, tiny container, larger containers around their property. The, the common ones are the saucers under the potted plants. Mm -hmm. We would love people just to get rid of those saucers, put them in the garage for a year or so, and just help us break this life cycle. Um, if they have a bucket of water out there, say for their mm -hmm. animals, for their uh, yeah, I was gonna say, dog's yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. Animals, water dish. Mm -hmm. Keep it cleaned out really clean. Uh, dump out the water every couple of days and clean out the inside with some soapy water and refill it and you're fine. Um, if you have rooting stock, a lot of people like to root plants in buckets mm -hmm. of water. Those are great places for this mosquito, and so um, it's best if you can do that indoors and in not encourage the mosquito to live in those sources. We also can provide mosquito fish for residents. It's a small little guppy looking fish that they can put in some of these containers and pots that are deep enough that will hold water. Oh, see, that'd be cool. I can see that, you know. Yes. Stick the fish on them. Teach yeah. them a lesson. Oh, the fish are great. And <laughs> yeah, teach them a lesson. Yeah, you yeah, can't beat that. Keep that in, you know, what's the number they can get a hold of you on that? Uh, our phone number is area code 626 814 Get a free fish. 9466. Yes. And that's what we want. Yeah, I, I saw that you also have something about keeping the drains clear. Right. Backing Any, up. If you have a, a drain in your yard or even the gutters in the streets, if they hold water, and there's leaves and uh, leaf litter in the water, it provides a perfect environment for the mosquitoes, the immature mosquitoes to live. They feed on the algae and the bacteria in that water. So dump out uh, any containers that are holding water and store them indoors. If you've got a, a drain in your yard, make sure the water flows through and it doesn't collect behind leaf litter. Um, or use a broom and sweep out any place where water is sitting and puddling. Yeah, I can see that that would be a problem. Because what I think comes to my mind is like uh, uh, a lot of the children's have those little swimming pools. Sure. See, and I'm thinking oh, as summer's coming, mm -hmm. they'll have those little inflatable pools or whatever that right. people, you know, they use them for a while and then they forget and yeah. they just leave it out there and don't uh, uh, address it. So right. I, I'm thinking that's something really, it's going to be a, a place where you could really find a lot of those mosquitoes. Sure. So you got to, people, you got to pay attention. This yes. lady knows what she's talking about. Look around your yard, you'd be surprised. Even uh, a little bottle cap from a, a water bottle, mm -hmm. if that is piece of trash underneath a bush and it fills up with sprinkler water, that little quarter inch of water is enough to, for this mosquito to lay eggs and survive. So look underneath the bushes, throw away any trash and clutter in the yard, get rid of it and help break the mosquito's life cycle. And for us, it's really important that residents help us out. It's one of those things that we can't do it alone. You know, well, we only have so many Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's like a neighborhood watch right. for mosquitoes. And I saw that you said it was identified in September, back in September, September 2011. September of 2011, right. Wow. Right here in the city of El Monte. Thank goodness. Um, and is now, we found it, uh, our neighboring district to the south also has it in South El Monte, and we found a couple of properties up in Duarte and Arcadia. But since we've treated those areas, we've not seen it back in those areas. But um, at this point, there's pretty uh, high infestation in El Monte. So it's taken us a lot of repeated efforts um, to try to break the cycle. Well, so it's like, uh, it's a war. Let's face it, call it's it what a, it is, right? Absolutely. It's a war. The war on mosquitoes. That's it. Okay, we're going to uh, cut away to so what we call in the party of the business some B-roll. A good friend of ours, Mr. Joe Batan, is coming from New York. He's going to be uh, visiting here in Southern California on the 27th, which we're going to get uh, hopefully get an interview with him. So uh, we'll be back right now just to finish up this conversation and scare more people here on Imani tonight. So that way people will pay attention. All right, let's take it away in the out of control room, Diego. Stay tuned, we'll be back. <laughs> You 
were my girl. Veronica, can I you man? Don't worry, we're gonna see how we're gonna get our product up there to the boys in Twin Towers and all the other spots. I would give you Make you my girl. I guess some of you have never heard me do this. You know, a lot of people can start off with slow, fast songs. I can do it with a slow song. I'm about the only guy in town that can end the show with a slow song. I'll leave you crying. Because <laughs> I remember the good old days in Wilmington when I used to hang out there with Ralphie Pagan. And George from the Midnighters used to back us up. Yeah. And of course we lost a dear one. Romeo's was gone, but he's in our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And for all the other rats out there that have kept the music strong for so many years, I'm going to dedicate this show to all the radio stations and public radio that gave Joe Batana play when nobody else would play me. Is everybody? 